Hey everybody, this is a Platinum Knight here with my first gaming first impressions video. This is a new series that I am thinking of uh, doing for my gaming channel. I already did my first uh, movie first impressions video over at the Platinum Knight Watches. If you want to check that out, I did a first impressions video on what I thought of the Suicide Squad, and I explained over there what's the difference between first impressions and a review? Well, first impressions means I'm just giving you my current thoughts or what I thought of it uh, just by beating the game. Uh, not too long ago, and I'm also am not going to do this uh, scripted. First impressions videos are unscripted, so you're pretty much going to get my uh, pure first thoughts. Uh, I beat uh, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword not too long ago, maybe about like two days ago. Um, one night uh, I couldn't fall asleep, and because I couldn't fall asleep, I I decided to play some Skyward Sword, and what I did not expect was I ended up beating it. So, yeah, um, that's my story on how I beat Skyward Sword. And so, a lot of you might want to know, what are my thoughts uh, after beating it not too long ago? People, it's fun. It's a really, really fun game. Uh, especially when it comes to being a Switch owner. But, even though um, I like it, it does has its flaws. But you know what? I'm gonna start with the positives first. For a Wii game, it looks beautiful. Especially in HD. Maybe it looks a little bit fuzzy and outdated on the Wii, but it definitely looks much, much better. Nintendo did a good job remastering in this game and making it look so clean and crisp. What I really like about this Zelda is I honestly liked the relationship between Link and Zelda. They have like really really good chemistry here. It's clear that Link and uh, Zelda obviously uh, have some romance going on in here and when you play the game uh, they do hint and indicate how close they are. Um, they start off as, uh, childhood friends, so, which is really nice. It's the very first time I have ever seen a version of Zelda and a version of Link, um, be that close to each other. When Zelda Skyward Sword first came out on the Wii, I believe, um, I was still, like, I don't know, either in high school, uh, yeah. And you gotta keep in mind, I never played the Wii version of Skyward Sword because by the time The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword uh, my Wii was already collecting enough dust because, well, you know. The Wii was one of those consoles that lacked a lot of variety. There really wasn't too much to play. So, by the time, uh, Skyward Sword came out, I was already planning on selling my Wii. And the reason why I sold my Wii at GameStop was, uh, so that way... I could get enough money to buy myself a laptop as I did not have one at the time. So I ended up missing out on the Wii version. But you know what? The more that I think about it, maybe that was actually a good thing. Because now that uh, a Skyward Sword is on the Nintendo Switch, I feel like I have a second chance. I decided to use my second chance, and although I still wasn't happy how this game started off at $60, I still felt like it was worth me getting it because I didn't play the Wii version. So to me, this felt like a brand new Zelda game coming out. It felt like a brand new experience. But getting back to the game itself, another thing I really liked about this game is the dungeons. The dungeons were so creative. 
it made me want to use my head. When Zelda Skyward Sword uh, was even first announced, I remember reading an article that Shigeru Miyamoto actually wanted to make this Zelda installment easier, especially for a younger audience. But now that I played it myself, I don't really see that. Because when you go through the dungeons, there are still a lot of puzzles and certain segments in the game that still require a high level of intelligence. And you know what? I admit, I did get stuck a couple of times, and I admit too, there have been times when I have gotten so stuck, I actually had to look up certain parts on the internet to find out what I was doing, and I never saw anything wrong with that. I mean, it's okay to get stuck, you know? That's what internet and online guides and walkthroughs are all about. Sometimes you just need extra help. So, when it comes to the puzzles and the dungeons, it really wasn't that easy. To me, in my opinion, I thought the puzzles and the dungeons felt like it was the same difficulty just as any other Zelda game like Twilight Princess, or The Wind Waker, or Ocarina of Time, or pretty much any Zelda game. So I felt like the difficulty for Skyward Sword was the same uh, in terms of puzzle solving. Another thing I really like about Zelda Skyward Sword is the music. That part in the beginning where Zelda is singing while she is playing her harp was just beautiful. Getting into the negatives, I will say Skyward Sword is challenging, but not for the right reasons. Here's the thing, one of Zelda Skyward Sword's biggest flaw, and what really holds it back is the motion controls. There was so many times where I swing my sword to try to hit an enemy and it just doesn't register. I'm gonna give you guys a pro tip right now. Because this was originally for the Wii, sometimes the Joy-Cons do not detect the motion controls. This means Nintendo put a dedicated button, which is the Y button, in order to retrace it or reconnect it. And I'm gonna tell you guys right now, you are going to be pressing the Y button a lot, especially when you're trying to balance yourself walking on a rope. And from what I understand too, the motion controls really weren't that accurate on the Wii either. I will tell you, like, I bet you, if Zelda Skyward Sword was 100% using buttons, this Zelda could have easily been more mainstream. Thankfully for this HD remaster, Nintendo implemented the option to switch to button-only controls in the options, or when you're playing in handheld mode. When I switched to button mode, at first I didn't really like how you have to hold the left shoulder button to control the camera, as every angle of the right stick controls the sword, but I eventually got used to it to where I would rather much prefer button controls only as it made the game easier as I felt powerless over the motion controls. But you know what, even despite my frustration with the motion controls, it would register most of the time. Not always, but at least 60% of the time. Another downside of Zelda Skyward Sword is, I do admit, it does lack variety compared to other Zelda games. Like, I wonder, why is there no boomerang? Or why does it lack many outfits or no variety of weapons? And it overall does lack uh, some content. And from what I understand, when you do more research behind the scenes of this game, it kind of does seem like that there 
there was originally supposed to be more content, such as dungeons, and believe it or not, there is only a total of seven dungeons, and the thing is, the final dungeon is pretty much just mini versions of other dungeons that you have played previously on mixed into one, so you're gonna have to take uh, the size of content aside and um, put it with a grain of salt because there really isn't too much content compared to other Zelda games such as Twilight Princess or Ocarina of Time or hell even the Wind Waker had a little more content compared to Skyward. But you know what? Even with that being said though, I still had a lot of fun with this game, and I wouldn't say it's a bad game. I mean, is it the weakest compared to out of all the 3D Zelda games? Sure, but like I said, I still thoroughly enjoyed myself, and it still felt like a classic Zelda game before it went full-on open world with Breath of the Wild. Now, I'm not going to give a final rating as this is supposed supposed to be a first impressions video, but I will say that um, for those of you who have never played a Skyward Sword, then I recommend you do so, especially if you're a Zelda fan or if you just have a Nintendo Switch. This HD remaster does a good job at being what it is, a remaster that really, really needed it. Sure, obviously I would have rather much prefer a three game uh, Zelda combination for Zelda's 35th anniversary. I would have rather at least would like um, Ocarina of Time, The Wind Waker, and Twilight Princess HD versions all in one cartridge similar to Super Mario All-Stars 3D. And I believe that will happen one of these days, but I think another reason why we did not get a Zelda collection too is because Breath of the Wild 2 is coming out next year in uh, 2022. So maybe that's the reason why they held it back a little bit. And of course, there are all already fan theories that the reason why Nintendo decided to remaster Skyward Sword is because it is going to be somewhat linked to Breath of the Wild 2. So yeah, um, there's still a lot of good Zelda stuff coming, and I feel that there is more to come. Alright everybody, that's it for my first gaming uh, first impressions video. Um, like I said, check out my movie channel for my first impressions videos on the Suicide Squad. If you enjoyed this video, um, be sure to give me a like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell for new videos, and yeah everybody, peace out.